Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today we're looking at is how to use a pinch off tool in order to put a service access port onto a packaged uh, refrigeration or air conditioning system. So some of the smaller appliances, air conditioning systems, and refrigeration systems do not have access ports. So if you're trying to work on one of those, then you need to go ahead and braze or solder an access port on. So you have a couple choices. Do you either recover all the refrigerant out of it, or do you use a pinch off tool in order to connect a service valve onto it? First things first, this is the low side right here. You see that you have a rotary compressor and an accumulator. That means that this is the low side. Uh, right here you have a, another stub. Those are called process stubs. This is the high side right here because this is the condenser coil and this is what's actually mounted outside where it's able to reject the heat at. So that's the high side process stub. This right here is a capillary tube. So this is the metering device for this packaged appliance. If you're just gonna recover the refrigerant out of this, then you could just use a piercing tool like one of these two right here. The only thing is sometimes uh, they don't seal right, so you wanna make sure that you get it on there real nice and straight and you're gonna go on the larger of the pipes, not the smaller pipes because this actually has to pierce in there. All right, so you have that little rubber section right there. I know a few of you have been asking to see this, so I just wanted to make sure we go ahead and do it. So first things first, this right here, uh, you're gonna end up pinching part of the copper pipe. You wanna keep it away from where you're soldering or brazing at because this is gonna be a giant heat sink and it's gonna take you too long to end up brazing or soldering wherever. So we're gonna pinch off right over here. We're gonna try not to affect this joint right here so we're going to pinch off here, and when we pinch off, we're going to uh, have both sides closed down together at the same time. We don't want one tight and one up uh, because that could cut into the pipe. So right now I'm just making sure that both of these are tightening down at the same force and I don't want to go past the point where I can't hand tighten it anymore. We're very close to being tight enough. We're just going to give it another little slight turn. Okay right there okay and right there so that should be enough if you tighten it too much you'll end up cutting right through it and you have a big mess in your hands and and that's exactly what you don't want to do all right so so that's that now we're going to use a mini tubing cutter in order to cut this off and you're going to see that this is not going to be um, fitting right there we're going to see if we can bend this a little bit Maybe that gives us enough room, I don't know. <clears throat> Let's try that. All right, we're not going to be able to go all the way around, but we'll be able to get enough on it to cut it. And then we'll just rock it back and forth until it falls off. Now I prefer putting the bolt on access valves in, uh, but the thing with that is you have to end up recovering all the refrigerant out of it uh, and then braze your service aperture on. And then after that, you got to weigh the refrigerant back in. This is a way to keep all the refrigerant into the system and uh, where you don't have to end up pulling it out and recovering it. All right, we just cut through. Now we're just going to wiggle this off because we didn't cut all the way around. Now
Now what I should have done is I should have sanded that. I apologize, I should have sanded that before cutting it. Uh, this way you don't get any uh, dust inside the pipe. So I'm just going to end up putting my finger over it just to make sure no dust gets in there. Shouldn't have to do too, too much sanding. We're just trying to get the uh, outer coating off just so it's pretty clean. Here we have our service access port and we're going to go ahead and take our valve core out. When you get these, they are only pr partially in there, so you can just pull them out by hand, but we're going to end up screwing it back down uh, correctly once we install this. So right here, I've actually pre-swedged this right here. I used my quarter inch section on my flare and swedge block, along with a quarter inch hammer swedge. This is quarter inch ACR, that's air conditioning refrigeration piping, and uh, it's also quarter inch OD. So that's quarter inch outside diameter, same as this, and so that's what we're going to use. So make sure that that's completely open. And for this one, we're going to be using Worthington 15% uh, silver brazing rods. And just say this system was an R410A system, I would end up brazing this just due to the higher pressures. And on other appliances that are lower pressure, you could just silver solder that. I like Worthington. I also like Lucas Milhoff. They're my two favorite soldering and braze rod manufacturers. I have my wet rag here ready to go. I've got my bucket of water, a spray bottle, fire extinguisher, everything I need to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my air acetylene torch. It's very important to think about where you're going to end up brazing this at ahead of time and basically your flame placement. So I could, I could point it up this way. I could point it down this way. Uh, I could always end up pointing it down this way as well. So for now I'm going to just going to start going straight up. I'm going to heat up my inner tube and once that's heated up I'm going to back up into my swedge and I'm going to pull all the braze upwards. And this is a big heat sink. I'm going to put a wet rag behind it. So that takes care of that old joint back there and this is kind of the same procedure as a system with a service valve, right? The service valve is holding all the refrigerant back and once you braze it and then we're pressure testing it, there's no way to add nitrogen onto this while brazing. I'm going to bend my braze rod right here at the tip so I can kind of get around. Right now my inner pipe is not hot enough. I'm going to switch to my other port. All right, and that's that. So that big heat sink was taking all my heat. You want to make sure that you get a large enough flame to be able to get in and get out. That's why when you have lower pressure systems, uh, such as R22, silver soldering is a good idea on something like this. But when it's a higher pressure system, you don't want to end up having a joint that would end up failing uh, possibly in the future. Let me feel this pipe back here. That's only just barely warm back here. That's really not hot at all. Yeah, I mean, I can keep my finger on there. That's no problem. Good. Good. 
but the amount of heat that this was putting off was just not enough. So I so I moved up to a higher tip. The higher the tip, the more heat it ends up throwing off. So you got to think about what's in the other directions. Once this is cooled down, we're just going to go ahead and pressure test this with a pressure lower than what's already in the piping. If you put too much pressure in, it's possible that you might be able to try to press through here onto the other side. So we know right now that our pinch off tool is able to hold back this pressure from, from the refrigerant right here. So we're only going to put in about 50 PSIG. So before putting our valve core back in, we're going to go ahead and do a pressure test. So I'm presently hooked up to nitrogen with this yellow line and I only set the regulator up to 50 PSIG. So now I'm going to go ahead and put on my blue hose right on here. We're going to go ahead and do our pressure test. So what I like to do is I get it up to pressure, tap on the gauge, and we are not going down in pressure. I'll also take our bubble leak detector right here, and I'll go over the joint. I don't see any bubbles forming. I just see these little bubble formations just falling down, but I don't see any bubbles forming on the outside of the braze joint. So now we're going to go ahead and let our nitrogen out, and we're going to go ahead and put our valve core back in. We're going to go ahead and take our valve core removal tool. We're just going to take this back end off. You can get a valve core removal tool that is literally just a screwdriver for valve cores, or you can actually get a, a setup like this. So that's what we're going to use to go ahead and put this back in. Now we're going to go ahead and take our pinch off tool off of the pipe. We're also going to go ahead and put bubble leak detector on our pinch. All right, I don't see any bubbles from that. Now we're going to use our pinch off tool to unpinch it. You only need to unpinch it a little bit just to get the refrigerant out. And you can see it's a very tight fit. So I think we're going to do it on a slight angle just so we can turn this. Okay, I believe that's enough. We should have pressure up here now. Let's go ahead and test it. So we need to go ahead and purge the air to line anyway, so let's go ahead and just test to make sure we have refrigerant coming out. Okay. So we just purged all the air to line and we have refrigerant all the way up to this service access port. Now we're just going to go ahead and disconnect our pinch off tool and we're ready for service. We're going to go ahead and leak check this one more time. Looks like we're good. So that's how you do it. And now you see this capillary tubing here? So that's the metering device and we're hooked into the low side. So that allows us to check the superheat of this unit. And so you know I've added a list of tools and supplies using this video down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.